Frick, tonight I'll go up against you. You're one of the biggest talents in Proving Room. Not only the biggest talent, but a former ACW World Champion. I can't tell you how nervous I am. Why? Because you're, you're bigger than me. You're stronger than me. Now, a few weeks ago, I saw you go up against my father, and you beat him. Now, I'm not my father. He might be almost your size, just a little bit more bigger than you, but I'm smaller than you. You might be stronger than me, bigger than me, but I'm more faster than you, more athletic than you. And tonight is the night where I can show the fans and proving ground why I can go against guys like you. So be ready, because you're in for one hell of a fight. Ho! The following contest is scheduled for one ball. No! WWN Training Center Wrestling fans, and it's time for another action-packed episode of WWN Proving Ground. I'm Big Slowhand, and alongside with me, and a, a commentary extraordinaire, my brother in logistic, logistic change me, I say. Sly Sly Stevens, how you doing, brother? Vic, I am so happy to be here tonight. We don't have to put up with Sean Davis this entire episode. Oh, absolutely. He's on a special assignment right now. And starting things out, we have Mr. Steven Frick versus Damian Gemini, a very unique matchup to start off tonight's show. A fantastic opening contest, but look at the difference. The difference in style, difference in size between these two athletes. Absolutely, a difference in philosophies, too. Damian Gemini, a very a very forward type of wrestler, very high flying type of wrestler. Stephen Frick, he likes to see people suffer in pain, which I can agree with. I like that a lot. Stephen Frick's <laughs> mindset is do whatever it takes at all costs. I can't help but respect that. Absolutely. Again, we got a loaded show tonight. And just look at these two right now. They're ready to start things off. Nice duck under by Gemini. You know, what, you know what the best part of this show is? What is that? They need me up here in the booth so bad for commentary that I can say and do whatever I want tonight. Yes, you can do that. Yes, sir. No more censorship. Hallelujah, that is awesome. Oh my goodness, this show is already coming off to an awesome start. And look at OC hip toss by Frick. Duck under by Gemini. Gemini has a lot of speed. Tremendous amount of speed. He's gonna need to do more than that though to take down the big man. Yeah, he does. He needs to he needs to keep up on his opponent. Now he's gonna try to go high risk. Oh, and he nails Frick right outside the ring. Right into your living room. Damian Gemini flies over that top rope. Gemini, who had a great showing last time out there at the Young Lions Cup, and now trying to solidify what would be a huge upset here over Mr. Stephen Frick. Where I don't know where he was uh, last week. I know he just had that huge, intense rivalry with Jonathan Hudson. Stephen Frick was spending time wherever Stephen Frick spends his time and thought of ways to decimate his opponents. Yeah, that, and that may have. That's what he may have been thinking of, because he just threw the shoulder right into the ring post there, Gemini, and he's in a lot of pain. That's what happens. Damian Gemini moves way too fast in the ring sometimes, and that time, it cost him. He made a big mistake. Gotta keep your head when you're in that ring, or actually outside of it, because that's where Mr. Steven Frick likes to go. Oh, did he just put a hole through that wall? <laughs> I know I'm not paying for that damage. That's for sure. Ah. 
Also on top of tonight's show with all the awesome matches we have, we also have another episode of the highest rated talk show in all of history, Richie's Way with your champion, Rich Port Ayala. Rich Port Ayala can do it all. He can defend that title, he can wrestle like his own business, and he can host a talk show. The guy can talk for days. He's just amazing, and we'll be seeing that tonight. As right now, Mr. Stephen Crick methodically, painfully just taking apart Damian Gemini. Um, I have a question for you. Maybe you know the answer to this. Uh, what's with that referee's haircut? Um, I'm not sure. Is that it's kind of like a Patrick Mahomes type of haircut there? I don't know. Well, let's see if he can count. Goes for the two. Oh, Gemini able to kick out. Look at Frick just slowly but methodically. It's like you're trying to see what's in his head. It's just, it seems like just pure pain. Let's, what can I do to injure this man next? He seems to be working on the left arm. Oh, and there's that chop. I don't think anyone could really get in the mind of Stephen Frick to think what he's thinking. I really don't. No, I don't think Sigmund Freud could. Gemini trying to get some offense back in, but after that chop by Frick, he seemed to have injured his right hand, possibly. The little puppy has a lot of fight in him, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. The big puppy has taught him well. Nasty chop by Frick, though, to end that offense. From what I understand, the big puppy's on the mend. He hurt himself last week. Yes, about last, that? last week during a Proven Ground Rumble, he went over the top rope. He was dominating that rumble, and he almost broke his wrist. Yeah, he got his paw stuck in the top, between the top and middle rope. Yeah. Well, hopefully for him it's not too dangerous he'll get back in the ring, but you know that's Man. the dangers of pro wrestling. I really don't <laughs> care either way. You know? <laughs> it's so good to have you back. You know, I really love this. This is fantastic. There's nothing the commissioner can do. <laughs> no, we're gonna have a great night tonight, unlike Hound Dog, who's suffering. Yes. Hound Dog who's right now at the vet and say the younger one might be joining him if he takes any more punishment here from Mr. Stephen Frick. Absolutely. Now it's he set up, looks to be a vertical suplex. Oh, snap style. Goes for the cover. Smartly hooks the leg. Just, I gotta tell you, Gemini, he's a resilient kid. He is, but this is a smart move by Stephen Frick. Applying the chin lock, applying all of his weight on him, and cutting off Davy and Gemini's air. It's only a matter of time before he puts him out. This lets up. I say that that's the thing with Stephen Frick. He loves that chin lock. He loves just to take the oxygen out of people. Gemini trying to get the crowd into this match. Oh, oh that, the ugly crowd in yes. Dunkin' City. <laughs> oh, feeling great tonight. Oh, nice knee though by Gemini. Enziguri gets Frick over by the shoulder. He might be out. He might be. Gemini gonna go for the rope, something he likes to do, but I'm not sure if he should do it against the leg of Mr. F Steven Frick. He's taking a lot of punishment. It is high risk for a reason. Beautiful five-star frog splash. He needs to cover him. Oh, yeah, I think he could have gotten a three if he just had a little more weight on him. Such a close call, but you, like you said, he doesn't have enough weight. The weight differential is so big in this match. Absolutely. Got it. Like I said, though, I got to hand it to Gemini. He's got a lot of fight now going back to the apron. I think he wants to, wants to bounce off the ropes. Let's see if he can connect. Ah, oh, Frick sees him coming a mile away. Oh, a spear by Steven Frick. Almost chopped the guy right in half. Oh, well, that would have been ugly. And that could be it. And that is. What a victory. Here is well, a very competitive outing by Damien Gemini, but it's the experience of Mr. Stephen Frick that gives him another victory here on Proving Ground. I cannot wait to see what Stephen Frick has in store in the next upcoming weeks. Awesome attraction, the one that makes it happen. Awesome, Adam Bell. And tonight, here at WW Improvement Ground, I go one on one against Chase McCoy. And I can, will continue my victory streak. Too bad for McCoy. He's just another bust ass buster that has to get the mess slapped out of him. Courtesy of Awesome Adam Bell. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is for one ball.
chase the corner, slowed him down. Yes, he has. He's got the buzzsaw in that corner exactly where he wants him. Well, that's the thing about buzzsaw Chase McCoy. He's very unpredictable. See, oh! So you have to keep up the offense. Ooh, looks like Chase McCoy didn't feel that. I think he liked it. Another one! Oh! He's a, he's a different type of human, that's for sure. Ooh, it's, like trying to, it's like trying to chop a brick wall. You've got to be kidding me. He's loving it. Get into a chop battle with it. Uh oh. Chase McCoy's got the arm. What is he trying to do? And he's going to try to eat it. Oh. oh. Shot by the awesome one. Oh, what an elbow to the head. European uppercut smartly goes right to the, to the buzzsaw to try to get that pin. Still cannot get the three count, though. What a tough man that's all he was. Absolutely. Now, but that's the thing about Adam Bell also going straight back to that stranglehold, hole, trying to get that submission maneuver on him. He's biting the rope. What is he doing? I, I don't think I can agree with that, but that's technically... Oh! oh I think goodness. that's technically legal. Oh! Certainly not sanitary. Well, Adam Bell putting in all the, all the kicks and punches. It is not bothering Buzzsaw. He is trying to eat the pain, it looks like. What is going on with this guy? It's nuts. I think that he'd be a good fit for the Crazy Masters. I think so, too. Buzzsaw... count off of that. Big, big shot to the chest. And now the buzzsaw gonna go up to the gonna go up to the turnbuckles providing he doesn't eat them. Can he reach out? Can he uh, he reach that far? I don't know about the oh, he he It's over. It has to be over. Oh. Oh. Awesome I'm Adam Vale able to kick out the last second benching. So he has a bright future. I knew it. An incredible singles match here on Proving Ground between these two gentlemen. It's going for a you look record, looks like. We got stuff. Big boot by Buzz, so now it's, now it's Adam Bell who's got him wrapped up. He's bringing him to the ring. Beautiful. Right on his neck. I think that's it right there. Oh, it is. Here is the winner, Buzz. Awesome, Adam Vale. <laughs> Tonight, maybe, maybe, maybe you were a little bit awesome. <laughs> but you know what? It's not going to hold me down. It's not going to keep me out. And if I face you again, awesome Adam Vale, things won't be the same. And as for you, Drake Xavier, you came back after I beat you. <laughs> after I beat you and you won that Young Lions Cup. Good for you. Because I'm not done with you if you're not done with me. <laughs> and if there's any future plans for me and you, <laughs> you'll get more of the same. defending his title on this segment, but it is time for another episode of Richie's Way, with uh, the greatest talk show host in the history of talk shows, Mr. Rich Portaiello, that freaking weekend. Uh-oh, Mick, I, I hate to do this to you, but Rick Dave is getting under my skin. He has me doing another assignment. You're going to have to do this one on your own. Well, 
I'm sorry to hear that, Sly Sai. I will do my best. I will be back later in the evening. Let me know how this goes. Oh, this should be awesome. I tell you right there, there is Victoria Yellow. There is the set incorporated. And now that now that Richie's way is on the air, all these other talk show hosts they're running away. Dr. Phil is now running away, which means Rich Portaiello could go out there and start psychoanalyzing people. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be incredible. As this the set incorporated make their way into the ring, the champions. I'm gonna let the champion himself do the talking. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it again. This is another one right here. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! That's disrespectful. Well, what a maddening way to end another 
awesome and impressive episode of Richie's Way. away with it. The set, you made a big mistake. And moving forward, I'm gonna get my money. Ladies and gentlemen, the following six man tag team contest is scheduled for a one fall. I've ever seen in professional sports is just... And you know Sean Davis gets mad at me when I say that. Sean Davis doesn't know if he's coming or going half the time. Unbelievable. I'm glad he's not here. Unbelievable. We got a crazy six-man tag team matchup in here. Uh, we got, um, again, the little legend, little Jay, Hans, Kemp, Hans Kemper from the great country of Chile, Aries Perez, as they are now, I guess, good friends with RB Unique. They've been, I guess, training together or so. It seems that way. And on the other side, we have guys that, you know, shop at the, the big sale they had over at Party City. <laughs> well, we got, got the lifeguard, Izzy Varden. We got the Titan of Poetry, King Atlas. And we got Cobra Singh. I got to let you know some inside information. If you're looking at Cobra Singh, he's holding on to his left wrist. Earlier today, he actually slipped on the arm, and now he is seriously injured. I'm not sure why he's been medically cleared to participate in this match. Oh, that happens to me all the time. Papa Children's aspirin, you'll be fine, Cobra oh, Singh. Right now, he's told me there's a lot of pins and needles, as he's going to try to lock up. He, he can't even... Oh, man. You see, I'm not sure why Dave Baker's allowed this guy to go in. This is a very sad situation. I don't know why Rick Thames thought it was a good idea to put this guy in the ring. Oh. They lock up right now. Again, he just he, and he's got to he's got to be a hundred percent against a guy like Little Jay. Oh, well, <laughs> Little Jay kind of got sucked into that one. Oh, Cobra Singh 
was a genius. That sleeping on the old arm trick. I heard uh, a million times. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Well, Hans Copper comes in with no no tag. And now here comes King Eckless with no tag. And Aries Perez with, with no tag. Uh, and you see, there we go. Izzy Garden trying to, he puts in the side headlock because he needs to restore order. Somebody needs to restore order in this situation. It, well, it's not our referee, apparently. Just stand there staring at him again. I think he's going to give him a five. I don't know which guy he's going to give a five count to. We got elbows going. Izzy Garden wrestling with a whistle in his mouth. I think that's a first I've seen. And now we got... This we, entire match is a first I've ever seen. Shots down by the team of Kemper Perez and Little J as the other guys scaroling to the outside. That was a car crash for sure, but all of them, you know, taking a breather, going to the outside. Let's see what happens next. Yeah, try to regroup. Let's say, it's got, if I was a bet man, this would be pretty much a, a pick of myself because I'm not sure really the experience of all these guys teaming together. I would say Perez and Kemper a little bit. You know, I know about your past. You are a bit of a betting man, so I understand. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, well, Singh going. He's still worried about that arm. He's, that arm is still hurting him. Yeah, uh, I think he's got something up his sleeve. That, no pun intended, because he's not wearing a shirt either. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Takedown by Perez on the lifeguard. Is he pardoned? See, that's the tallest lifeguard I've ever seen. I think I heard this man make the undertow tap once. <laughs> oh, King Atlas getting taken down by a Lake Larry by Aries Perez. This is the thing about Perez, you know, very stylish outside the ring, very devastated inside. Every strike counts when it comes to Aries Perez, especially them forearms. And the Titan of Poetry, King Atlas, and I gotta. I know it's a bit of a downer, but I gotta say it's the original king of poetry among... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, big chop. The original king of poetry, along with the original everything in pro wrestling. Superstar Billy Graham has passed away since his taping. And I want to send my condolences and respects. Yes, yeah, very, a very unfortunate news. Our condolences go out to his family. But right now, Aries Perez really from that snap suplex. Uh, absolutely. Nice suplex by the... By the Brooklyn native, I believe, King Atlas. Pretty big guy inside that ring. Have you ever heard some of his poetry? Um, no, I can't say I have. I, my poetry expertise goes about as far as John Balby. And even I don't know who that is, so you, I, you're one leg up on me. Don't look it up, kids. Don't look it up. All right, Izzy Barton now with the right. Going in for that arm along with that... A nice little submission maneuver there on Aries Perez. And I think that's the best way you gotta handle Perez. You gotta keep him off his feet. If you neutralize those hands and those feet, then Aries Perez does not have a lot to offer. Nope. Big shot. Now Izzy Varden taking him up. Oh, Blue Thunder. Arabon goes for the cover. Tries to push that leg for leverage, but doesn't get it. Real close call there. Yep. Goes for another cover. And another. Maybe he tries again, he might get the three. See, I like the lifeguard, but I have to say, if he just hooked the leg, it could have been over. That is true. I, I don't think they teach that in lifeguard school. Big elbow by King Atlas. Now he goes for the cover. And they don't teach leg hooking in poetry school either. Obviously not, but Aries Perez in deep trouble. He needs to make a tag desperate. Oh, good jawbreaker. Out of day the time. Come on. Oh. Ends up very, very vicious. But you're right, he's got to get some air in his body. He's got to get to that corner. Look at little Jay and Hans Kemper on the apron, chopping at the bit. They want in. They want in. Hans Kemper and that hair of his. It's the tag. Jumps in. Takes down Cobra Singh. He needs to watch that arm. Oh, drop kick. Singh tried to block the drop kick with his left arm, which took him down. Little legend, Little J. Oh, things are in trouble now. Oh, vicious kick by Izzy Hart. Wait, a did the ref? Uh, maybe the ref didn't see that tag. And now Perez with that awesome, vicious. Uh, I don't think he got all of it. Though. He got flustered there. Big but Poetry man got all of that power slam. Okay, I think these are the two legal men in the ring slide side. How can you tell? Uh, you can't. Little J right now putting the shots in on King Atlas. Celebrating, seeing Cobra Singh gives him a shot for good measure. And there he goes back down onto the floor. Nursing that arm, and the lifeguard, Izzy Barton, comes in the ring. Maybe he's the legal man. Now he's putting...
putting a shot to Little J. See, this is quite, I say, a crazy matchup here. Now everyone in the ring. Big Yurinagi slam by Izzy Barton, headbutt by Eric Perez, doesn't quite work. And he gets a slam for his, for his attempts. And now a tag to Cobra Singh. I'm gonna say Cobra Singh's illegal man in the ring. It's gotta be, there was a tag, the referee acknowledged it. And well, Cobra Singh goes back outside the ring. Or not. And maybe that was a tag of friendship, but what that's going on, Izzy Barton gets a submission, Lil J, the referee's missing the submission. We got a tap out. Yeah, I think he sees the submission, but that wasn't a legal Oh, no, was the, it? I don't know. Wait a minute, the referee says he was not the legal man in the ring, and now he makes a tag to Cobra Singh. But, you know, to be honest, I think the referee made a correct decision in saying that Cobra Singh was the legal man. The lifeguard's getting on the referee's case, but there was a tag. He's the one that made the tag. Absolutely. Well, now both guys set up a double team maneuver on Little J. If they can get Little J up, which is much easier said than done, I'll tell you. Little J, very strong. Perez gets on the apron, shot by Varden. Hepper gets on the apron, shot by Varden to him. And now it's Cobra Singh. Well, I don't. This this could be devastating coming up here, Sly Side. It's really hard to manipulate those short limbs of Little J. Well, he's, now he's got the submission in there, the Cobra Clutch, and that is working. With all of them in the ring. Well, I get the feeling the commissioner's going to be looking at this match, but we have the winner, and it is Cobra Singh, King Atlas, and the lifeguard Izzy Barton. Now, this has been a wild, wild night. I can't wait to see what the rest of the WWE Proving Ground has to offer us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the King of Battle, Nick Quinones. And after taking some time off, I am back here at Proving Ground. See, the last time I was here, my war with my former tag partner, Rafael Delgado, really got to me mentally. So I need to take a little break. But tonight I'm back. And I'm in the ring with the mad German Krieger. 
Now, Krieger, you've been terrorizing Proven Ground for weeks on and weeks on. That's going to end tonight. We've done war before. Tonight's going to be no different. So, Krieger, just like everyone else, the King of Battle is here to blaze the future. John Davis put you up to this. Uh, yeah, we're, we're good friends, so he told me he needs some help tonight, so I'm here to help out. Well, Business as usual. Well, well, thank you, Sean Davis. But we do have quite a good matchup here, the Monster Krieger, the German Monster Krieger versus Nicholas Piones. And I'll tell you both, kind of a very interesting power matchup I see in this, these two right here. Yeah, definitely two big powerhouses we got here. Um, Krieger with his claw, definitely a devastating move to watch out for. And then we also got Nicholas Kionis, who definitely has the crowd behind him here tonight. Oh, one of the most popular wrestlers here on Proving Ground. And I'll tell you, I've been watching you a lot lately, Tito Torres, and I know you're known for your high flying, but when I've seen you come here in Proving Ground recently, you've been improving your ground assault on the, in your matches, taking a little more technical. I've definitely wanted to take a different approach since I come back. Uh, I'm just definitely taking a more technical, grounded approach. Because at the end of the day, I've got to take care of my body and I've got to do the smart thing out there. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, there you have it right there from Tito Torres. A salute by Nicholas Piones, the German monster Krieger. Kind of a clean break. Krieger, who just got back from a, a, a vicious rivalry with awesome Adam Vale. Nicholas Piones, you've been fighting Rafael Delgado. You've been seeing those street fights. You've been part of them. And I was about to say, are you, are you going to get any, in any more of the set's business tonight? I mean, like, interfering in Richie's way like you obviously just did. Look, all we were trying to do was just help Frick out. He didn't want to help. It is what it is. I'm scheduled to face Delgado later. He did cost us the titles last week, so I'm looking for some retribution. That's true. You and Benji Neptune right now, top contenders for the ACW Tag Team Championships. And I'll tell you, I'm kind of surprised because the set incorporated a team that's been together for a long time, and you and Benji just kind of been starting teaming out. Well, when you have great chemistry with somebody, you know, there's nothing really you can do about that. Me and Benji, we gel well together. We're both former amateur wrestlers, and we both have the same goal in mind, and that's taking out the set and becoming ACW Tag Team Champions. Right now, Krieger having the advantage of Nicholas Quinones shoving those right hands, and I, th I think he wanted to try to go for the claw early. Both guys jostling for position, but the eyes getting raked by the monster Krieger. Yeah, Krieger definitely taking a more methodical approach here. Um, Nicholas Quinones, a former U.S. Army veteran, so I know he's definitely going to pull through this. He knows that he can pull through this. And he's got the crowd behind him, too. He is absolutely resilient. He is tougher than a $5 steak, as they would say. This guy, he takes a beating, but he comes on back. But I'm not, oh, sure. Ooh, I'm not sure he's going to come back after that German suplex. Wow, what a landing on the head right there on, for Nick Quinones. I hope he's all right there. Uh, say right now, referee tending to him as Krieger looking for some support from the fans. 
but not getting any. Not in a match like this. Not against Nick West. Drops the elbow. Very smart. And he's, he's definitely in control in this match right now. Yeah, you can definitely tell Krieger's taking his time. Um, definitely using his power here to his advantage, his strength. And now he's got Nick exactly where he wants him. In his clutch. Yep, got him in the clutch. Trying to arch in on the back of Cornones, who's been, again, every party part of King Cornones has gone through hell this year in all his battles with Rafael Delgado and others. I mean, his knees have been hurting, but he keeps coming back week after week here at a proving ground. Big shot by Krieger. Now, oh, spinning neck breaker. This could be it here. Devastating move there. You can tell he's focusing on the head, the neck area. And now he's going to the top rope. Is uh, this is going to the top rope. This is very unusual. You are correct, Tito. He is going to the top rope. He's taking a page from your book, I believe. Oh, man. I, I mean, let's see. Wow. Oh. Little homage to Jerry Lawler there with that fist drop off the top rope. Now he has Canonis exactly where he wants him. Goes for the cover. Oh. Doesn't put any uh, doesn't put any pressure on the shoulders though. I noticed that. Yeah, definitely needs more pressure on the shoulders. A better cover there. Maybe hooking both legs. Uh, I think he might have just gotten a little lazy and complacent on there. Oh, here it comes though. Now he's signaling up the iron claw. That claw of Krieger. He's got it set and ready to go against Pinones. Pinones not knowing it's coming. Here it, oh, he's did he get to them? He gets the claw in. Mike Krieger has that thing all set in. Oh! Oh, it looks what? like Quinones is getting a triangle. Wow, out of nowhere, beautiful triangle choke by Quinones if he keep his shoulders off the mat, and he does. Triangle armbar, if he stretches out that arm, he might get him here. But Krieger, Krieger with the shots. And he's trying to go for the claw. Quinones kicks him off. Like you said, Tito, very resilient, Quinones. I'm sure he learned that from his army training days, for sure, basic training. Tremendous instinct. Now he shoots Krieger off the ropes. What's he got coming up? Going for a clothesline. Oh! Big back elbow. Now he's awake. Yep, now, now the juices are pumping. The adrenaline's going, and Canona's right now back up on his feet. I know this feeling, getting the crowd behind him. He's feeling that adrenaline coursing through his veins. And now he's going to give Krieger everything he's got. Oh! Big uppercut in the corner. Does that actually work in the crowd of the match? Oh! Another kick. When you feel the adrenaline of the crowd, you can do anything in that ring. And that's exactly what Quinones is feeling right now. And now it's Krieger who is out on Dream Street. A very rare position. Quinones getting a USA chant going on here in Port Ritchie, Florida. Here at the training, at the training center. Oh, big blue thunder bomb. Almost wow. gets the three count. The left shoulder coming up at two and three quarters. What a back and forth matchup we have here tonight. Krieger smartly goes outside the ring. Kanotas wants to talk to the ref about it. He seems a little disappointed not getting that three. And now he needs to get Krieger back into the ring. And smartly, I think he's going to say no, he's going to want to go outside the ring. I thought he wanted, wanted to try to let Krieger get in the ring and take a shot at him from there. Instead, we got a chair shot. Oh, and that will be a disqualification. And they had to know Krieger was going for something. Say Krieger with the chair shot, and now with the iron claw, he's got it on Cornones. He's gonna take Cornones out. <laughs> you better be careful, Tito Torres. This could be you one day. <laughs> I've got my eyes on everybody on the Peru Ground roster, and as far as Rafael Delgado knows, he's gonna get what's coming to him when I face him tonight. All right, well, folks, as you see right there, our crooked commissioner, Rick Thames, checking in. Your winner of the match by disqualification, though, Nicholas Quinones. Crooked, Rick is the fairest commissioner that we could possibly have here at Proving Ground. Whether you like him or not, he plays by the rules, and that's a simple But Krieger has shown proving ground in the world tonight is that I am one of the most ruthless individuals here. I do not care about the wins and losses. The only thing I care about is destroying whoever lies in my path to conquest. Witness Krieger, my now grossartigkeit. Witness Krieger!
know, it didn't have to come to this. You see, T, you wanted the team with the DOM, you wanted to join the heaters, that didn't work. So yeah, we had our match, I won, I beat you, one, two, three. So now you wanna get mad? You wanna jump me? You wanna throw me out of the battle royal, costing me my title shot? Okay, okay, I get it. So now it's come to this, it didn't have to be personal. But now, you see, we gotta take it to the streets. You wanna jump somebody? Understand, I gotta bring out a beast just to beat the dog. Hey, this cat is one tough lion. Oh, you better believe we coming for you. Step inside the heater's lounge, T. See what kind of man you are. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a Portridge Street by Shadow Bear Partners, I'm talking about a whole whopping two matches. We got the DOM and K9 Alpha T, and we have a Port Richie Street fight, which, as these fans know, anything goes until the cops arrive. And here comes a fighting right now. DOM, the CEO of the Haters, a guy who last week was on his way to winning that Proven Ground Rumble in that Florida Heritage Championship, but you know who got the way. He certainly was, and then K9 Alpha T came in, threw him right out of the ring, and here we are. Absolutely, K9 Alpha T does not worry right now about wins and losses. He just wants to tear apart the DOM. And if DOM's not careful, K9 might get his wish. K9 Alpha T's personality is simple. He cares about himself and he cares about destruction. Absolutely, and there's been a lot of destruction with these two. Whether it's been inside the ring, outside the ring, outside the building, it has not stopped between these two. That's why our commissioner did sanction a Port Ritchie Street fight, which oddly enough, I agree with. You know, with the way these two have been going at it, I don't even know if the four corners can keep them in there and keep this thing at bay. I believe, yeah, I, I agree with you, Slice. I, I, I don't think it will. And there it is already. They're on the outside. Well, they are now outside the ring, fighting out there amongst the people in your living rooms right in your face right now. Absolutely, fans. You better be careful watching this on YouTube. You might get a punch right to the cranium. You don't want that. I know I don't want that. I certainly wouldn't want to be in there with K9 Alpha T or the DOM for that matter. But with the mean streak that Alpha T has been on, everyone needs to stay there. Absolutely. Just hit him with a shoe. I think K9 Alpha T hit him with a shoe. Well, remember, anything goes here. The referee doesn't have to do much work besides count the pinfall. Absolutely. And we'll see if that happens inside the ring because that's what Alpha T does have to do. Brings a DOM in there, and now it's K9 Alpha T in control of this street fight. And now he's got the steel chair slide side. I hope he can capitalize because you keep your eyes off the DOM, he will strike. Great expert analysis because he did, and the DOM just the, strikes right there, shot right to the back. Hey, a little tit for tat, he grabbed the chair, and he's got that metal pipe going to work. K9 Alpha T. Great usage of that pipe. It's like a scientific master with it. Oh, drills him right in the corner. That could be it right there. See, he's gonna try to turn him over. Goes for the cover, hooks that leg. Almost gets a three count. See, it's one thing to be hit by someone's fist, by someone's foot, but when you get hit with metal objects, there is nothing that compares to that. No, absolutely. Oh. And now the DOM looking like he's going to try out for the Tampa Bay Rays here as he's using that pipe, swinging it away, and now he's going to use it to possibly choke the Alpha. Alpha K9 there. It's a 
looked at it right across the face. Oh, right into the teeth. Alpha T in a lot of pain. DOM standing tall. He's gonna try to roll him over again to get another cover. Nope. Almost. I tell you, a very brutal match right now. A Port Ritchie street fight between these two. And notice how the match started out. Fast paced, very hot, and we've slowed down. We've slowed down the pace at this point. Absolutely, it's turning into survival. Both guys have been expending a lot of energy in that ring in a very short amount of time, Mike. That is true. Al Patin now with the right fist. Look like he's got the chair set up for the DOM. It might be no block by DOM. Al Patin's mush coming into the chair, it does. Oh, it backfired on him. He set up that chair in that precarious position, trying to do some damage to the DOM, but it backfired. Goes for the cover. Kicks out. That's the second time now that chair's backfired on Al Fatih. DOM now be. I would say he's being methodical, but I think he's just really tired in a fight like this. It can take so much out of you. It really can. These guys could be running on fumes. We wouldn't even realize it yet. DOM using the speed coming in with that full force boot. Alpha T, K9, now he's got the chair. There you go, a direct shot. K9, Alpha T, and steel chairs do not mix. Not in this match. Now D DOM setting up that chair that has been used so well against K9, Alpha T. If it's worked for him, why not keep going for it? Shot there by... K9 though, he's got DOM up. Looks like he, could he go for a big thump? Oh, he hits it! Right in line with that steel chair. Steel chair meets spine, and now he needs to cover it. We could have some broken Carlitz and broken bones on the DOM, but Alpha T, see K9 Alpha T right now having a hard time getting up. He's taking such a beating in this street fight. He's going for the chain. I'm telling you, giving him that power slam took the life out of both of them. It looks like K9 Alpha T is not worse for wear. K9 Alpha T's got his fist wrapped up with that chain. And I don't think the DOM knows it. Oh, he doesn't. He gets slammed by that. He gets shot and right by the K9 Alpha T. Just decked him, and it looks like he was out on his knees for a second. There's a plop right onto the canvas. Both guys tearing each other apart here in this Newport Richie or this Port Richie street fight. Newport Richie wouldn't sanction a match like this. That's how crazy this match has become. I mean, if it's Port Richie, I, I, I wish there was a new one. <laughs> oh, slams him down, and that should be it for the DO, DOM right now. There is no way he gets up from this. And there you have it, your winner. I'll let Michael James say it. K9 Alpha T in a brutal, brutal match. Able to get a measure of revenge against the DOM. That match, while it didn't last that long, was impactful from start to finish. K9 Alpha T the victor. And now, I think he's going to run rampant here in WWN Perfect Round. Tonight, Dom is done, and done for good. So now, I can focus on what Alpha T is meant to stand for. Intimidation and elimination. And now that Dom is out of the way, and I'm once again a lone wolf in this thing, I can get back on track of being the dominant force here in WWN, becoming the alpha male here in this brand. And I'm taking down anyone and everyone that's standing in my way. Nowhere to go but the top. Everybody in the back better watch their back because I'm going to be chewing on it. Arr! Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Introducing first.
gentlemen, entering the ring, he is the one half of the ACW Tag Team Champion, being accompanied by Catalina Perez, me, his is Supreme Machine, King of the Pile Driver, Francisco Kiyotso! Definitely an impressive up and comer. But tonight, I think he I think he picked someone a little too big for him and Francisco Piazza. Benji Neptune has just been a, a fly in the ointment of the set incorporated for a yeah. long time. Yeah, you know, uh, they, they got the numbers, definitely. I mean, that's one thing I've learned in my short time of watching uh, WWE Improving Ground. And uh, numbers is everything, and especially when you got a leader like Francis Francisco Piazza, another 30-year vet. Those discus forearms, very this could be it. Oh, oh, wait a minute. This, oh, oh, this is Delgado. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the referee's standing there clueless. Thump, you're correct about the numbers game. Benji didn't yeah. count for that. And there's Delgado right now putting the beat down. This could be the end of Benji Neptune here at Proving yeah. Ground. Oh, that is gonna be it. There's Delgado again delivering that elbow. Saying there's no one coming out to help Benji Neptune. Yeah, we're, what's going on here? I mean. Oh, there's Dean oh, yeah. Sterling. There's, here comes the rest of the numbers. Here comes the champ, Rich Portaiella. There is, of course, the beautiful Catalina Perez at yeah. ringside. Who's missing? I, or Gus De La Vega Gus could De La not Vega. make it tonight, but he, he sends his support. And now what I would say the prince of the pile drivers right up there. It's gonna be a spy pile driver, just like Ted DiBiase. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Here comes Sider, here comes Shungas, here comes Tito Torres. And now the numbers have evened out. Unbelievable. They, they ruined a good moment. But they have evened out the numbers, the madman at work at Tito Torres, and we have a brawl inside this ring. These guys are set up. The referee's got to get some help to get order. The, the referee's been having a hard night tonight. There's yeah. been so many crazy matches going on, and now we got the commissioner, Rick Thames. And Rick Thames. You know what, Seth? I got something for you right here. Obviously, you guys do not want to fight within the parameter of a normal rules match. You guys come out here week after week, you're building your set here. You know what I'm going to do? Right now. No rules match right now. Amen, right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh wow. You kidding me? Rick Zane's asserting his authority. Hold on. I'll tell you what. Look, this match is going to take place, or you guys are permanently banned from WWE. No way! Wow. Wow, can he do that? I do not do that. Ring the bell right now. We got two seconds. We have a. Oh, no. We have a. When Rich Porter Allen sees Sider with his hat on, he's going to have a connection fit. 
This is absolute madness, wrestling fans. This commissioner has gone out of control. Now we have an eight-man match with no rules, Dr. Dupree. I know, I know you know what it's like to be in a no-rules match. Absolutely. Unbe the bigger story right now is Scyther has got the, the heavyweight champ's hat on. He's got the champ's hat. I can't believe it. I can't believe Scyther's in the ring. This man has been pile-driven yeah. basically every week by Cruiserweight Champion Daniel Sterling. He's been left a bloody stump. How many times? Uh, just time and time again, he yeah. keeps coming in the ring. His neck must be made of granite. He's starting out right now is Rafael Delgado and Tito Torres. And unbelievable. No rules in this match. Anything can go. And it's Delgado right now. That's the thing with these guys. Set Incorporated, they like to play with no rules. I feel like Tito should have been more aggressive. Under, given the fact that, you know, you, you know what these, what these guys are going to do coming in. You got to take the fight right to them. Have any chance of beating him. Well, he's putting in some moves together on Delgado. Delgado able to kick out. You know, the set, they might be underhanded and cowardly. That might be the appearance. That might be the appearance now. But on that side of the ring, you got four guys that absolutely know what they're doing and are double tough. And if you underestimate them and you don't take the fight to them, you're going to leave here very disappointed in the outcome. That is true. And to be honest, I have to admit, these four men on the other side, Neptune, Madman at Work, and Tito Torres, they have shown their valor in this type of feud. But I, I am just tired of Commissioner Rick. Look at this. He's got the hat on. Oh, he's uh, defiling that hat. And massive chops at Rafael Delgado. Unbelievable. Oh, nice eye rate. Believe tags are still going to be in order. Daniel Starlin isn't even ready to wrestle tonight. He's in his street clothes. Yeah. This is a new look for, for, for uh, Daniel Starlin, for sure. It's an awesome look for him. He can go out to the clubs afterwards, but right now he gets shot to the ring and a drop kick by Scyther. Unbelievable, Thump Dupree. Yeah, his pants, pants are a little tight, to be honest with you. Pants are a little tight. A little bit. Goes for the three count, but does not get it. They say anything goes in this match. Apparently, according to the commissioner, that we are still going to have tags. Reminiscent of that Freebirds Von Erichs match back in the, the Parina Champions. Oh, yeah. And the, fan, the fans are getting a treat because it's no holds barred. Unbelievable. The fans have been getting treats all night tonight here on Proving Ground. Absolutely. Neptune shooting Starlin off. Goes for the back elbow. Now, these two are no strangers to each other. They've been battling over that Cruiserweight Championship for a big chunk of this year. And now it's now it's Neptune thinking of. He's going to be sadistic, this guy. Starlin doing the right thing, trying to get away from him. Uh, and get back that hat. Get back that your hat. Unreal. I poke by Daniel Starling, very wise. He got stuck right into that one. Short right fist. And it doesn't have to be Greco-Roman, it just has to be effective. And there is the tag to Mr. RPA, the champion, Rich Port Ayala. I say, you've seen this guy wrestle a couple of times. Absolutely, five-tool guy, 100%. Capable of holding heavyweight titles anywhere and everywhere. And in fact, he does. Absolutely. And right now, he is making mincemeat. Oh, yeah, Benji Neptune is outclassed. Clear. He's stopping the time. He's stopping the watch known as Benji time right now. As a referee being distracted by the other guys in the corner, like, the, like God's sake. Yeah, he's... Psycho like looks like he's out of a clockwork orange. Unbelievable. And now a tag to the king of the power virus. The Godfather. Oh, oh I love that. The garlic knots by Francisco Chiazzo. That was uh, right in the Stendinis. Absolutely. See, I knew it was a good idea getting you up here. Yeah. Oh, look at this. A little strutting action by Daniel Starlin. Well, this is what the commissioner wanted. You know, you can say what you want about Daniel Starling, but he is talented. He is, he is talented. He's learned He's learned early in his career how to win. He's surrounded himself by winners. And right now, he's he's the uh, Proving Ground Cruiserweight Champion. So, I mean, he is the proof's in the pudding. I mean, look at all that gold sitting in the corner right now. They just they dominate right now here on Proving Ground. Though they have had their problems, Daniel Starlin, in particular with Cypher. Oh, the sleeper hold. Oh, beautiful. I think this that's it. Be, this could be it. I think so. This crowd is wild into this match. As Starlin right now trying to take 
out the last moments of breath from Benji Neptune. He doesn't gonna... have that quite cinched in, though, does he? No, Benji, and Benji's still, he's a strong kid. Oh, he's, you know, he's definitely got the strength advantage. Even though he's taking quite a beating in this match, he's probably still got enough to break a hole. Uh, he is now, now he's in there with a real pro. Now he's in there <laughs> with a very methodical Rich Portaiola. Ah, uh, the soon-to-be Emmy Award-winning Rich Portaiola right now, putting the boots to Benji Neptune. Ah, uh, and here comes the fifth. Nice. And there's nothing the referee really can do about it. The referee tries to restore order in this match. That's just not going to be happening. Well, it's no holds barred for one. Absolutely. And now a tag to one of the most loyal people I've ever seen, Rafael Delgado, a powerhouse from the Dominican Republic. Putting his shots in on Benji Neptune. And I'll tell you, it is the beat up Benji Neptune hour here on Proving Ground. He and Benji have a history, don't they? I believe they have, yes. Tag I, know, I think pretty much everybody in this match. Oh, they have some way, shape, or form. They have fought each other left and right. This has been quite a feud between these two factions. And Starlin, who I believe is now an official member of the set. I'm not quite sure. I know he's friends with them. Yeah, he's, he's, he's an affiliate. They had common enemies. Tag back up with the Kiato, and now Kiato's gonna fly Dump Dupree. It's Super Gallic Knox. Watch the height he gets on this. Oh! What an athlete. What an athlete. Unbelievable. Wisely makes a tag, but unfortunately, Chungus is in the ring, and Chungus is a house of fire. Chungus all going in like he's a just, locomotive on a He's just a big man, you know? Chungus, just a big man doing big, big man stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, he took man. Starlin's head off. Big man destroying our Cruiserweight champion right now. Ayala makes the save. Ayala and Chungus have been battling for the uh, for the proven ground heavyweight championship. And now here comes Saito with that. With his hat. He's still wearing that hat. He's gonna have to get that cute, clean and fumigated. And yeah. Now, now what is he what is Saito thinking of? I don't know what he's thinking of. Chungus coming in over the corner oh, and knock out the rest of the set. Benji Neptune coming in the ring. I'm not sure if that's why he's very hurt. Saito now. Oh! oh! Did I just see Red Mist from Dupree? Yep. Scyther just... Benji Neptune hits Chungus without seeing him because Scyther spit some Red Mist that was meant for Daniel Starlin instead of singing... Here we go! ...into the pile. Come oh, back, that's son, it. Scyther! Night, night, Buttercup. Starlin takes back the hat, he hooks the leg, and he gets the three! Very impressive victory. Hey. No holds barred is no holds barred, brother. You're absolutely right, Dump. It was no holds barred. Scyther, I thought, had Daniel Starling dead to rights, but Benji Neptune, who was previously injured in that match, accidentally let go and is now blinded and accidentally hit Chungus. And I'll tell you, the Sam Incorporated looks like a very unified group in that ring right now. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're going to introduce some kind of, especially mist, into a match, you know, it, it comes... It comes with, with a certain amount of risk. And Benji Neptune found out what that risk is all about tonight. Well, it's back to the drawing board for those gentlemen, Mad Men at work. Look at all that gold in the ring. Yes, absolutely. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to bask in their glory.
You talk about Francisco Chiazzo, the ACW Tag Team Champion. You talk about Rich Port Ayala, the WWN Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion. And you talk about the muscle right here. You talk about Rafael Delgado. Damn. You know, a lot of people have been questioning why I joined the set. Because we're after the same thing. The three things that everyone wants, but we already have. Money, power, and respect. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all have noticed, but we have all the gold. We dripping in the sauce, mama. So frito, okay? So you know what, Rich, I'm going to hand it to you. Tell them the you rest. There is not much I need to say. You guys said it already, but let me say this. We are an elite group that cannot be touched, and we are going to continue Continue to leave an impact in the world of professional wrestling because we are the set incorporating all time. <laughs>
Uh, your Young Lions Cup winner, Drake Xavier, which is a good news for him. He got that trophy. The bad news, he does have to face Jonathan Hudson. Yeah, and uh, Drake's in for uh, a little bit of a test here because uh, I've known John Hudson for like 10 years. I fought him, teamed with him. You know what it's like to be in the ring with Jonathan Hudson. And Absolutely, he knows what it's like to be in the ring with me. Uh, yeah, uh, very uh for way of saying that. I actually appreciate that there, Buzzsaw. Jonathan Hudson, who himself has just been finishing feuds left and right, sending people packing out a proving ground, finishing an incredible match with Mr. Stephen Frick. And now he's in there against Drake Xavier. And again, from the onset, you would say that Hudson is the favorite, but I don't think he should take the Paladin uh, lightly in this match. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think Drake can... He, he might get close, but I don't think he's going to pull it off against Hudson. Like I said, I've known Hudson a long, long time. Drake, Drake's got a lot of ways, long ways to go. Well, right now the Alpha, the Alpha Daddy extending his hand out for a sportsmanship shaking of the hands. Bite him, bite him. Yeah. You know what? I agree with you, Buzzsaw. That's, bite. that's what I did. That, that's what you did. I bit Drake's hand. You, you bit a lot of things tonight. You were biting the rope. See, they had to clean it with Lysol during the intermission. You know that, right? Why didn't they do it before I bit him? I, yeah, oh my God! You said it was that dirty, huh? Unbelievable. Big shot by Jonathan Hudson. As folks in the booth with me, Buzz saw Chase McCoy. I don't even think they have the combat zone in Boston anymore. You know that, right? Yeah, I, I don't even know. He, in the ring right now, it's Hudson. Whipping Xavier off the rope. Xavier, uh, Thunder. Oh. Nice move by Drake. I taught him that, probably. You taught him that, huh? Probably. Well, however it works right now, Xavier is in control of Jonathan Hudson, but instead of joining to the fans, he probably wants to continue the offense, especially against the Alpha Daddy. Oh, he does his own version of the Hurricanrana. I don't know, maybe Hudson taught him that. Did you, take, did you teach Jonathan Hudson no, that? maybe Hudson taught Drake that movie. Oh, yeah, that, that could be. I, I don't have that in my notes, but that could be possible. Tell you, it was Which one did it better? Even, pretty even for looking from here. In fact, I've never seen Hudson do that before. That's very impressive by Jonathan Hudson. Xavier, who likes to do a very high risk style of offense. And you, you know that very well also. Those shots in by Hudson. You don't want to go toe to toe with Hudson. No, the chops. Oh, the chops in the fist by Jonathan Hudson. Drake loves chops. Just ask me. I'll tell you. He, well, I don't think he's going to like these chops. That just broke the decibel level here at the training center. And speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, res wrestling fans, those who want to be wrestlers, we got the WWE Training Center here at WWNTC.com. Oh! If you think you have the guts to become a professional wrestler and wrestle somebody like Jonathan Hudson, and try to get in the ring and for some reason get those chops administered to you, you see it right there on the board. You see the website. They're taking in new classes all the time. It's it. It's it. Oh. And you too could be on proving ground. We have here our main event, Jonathan Hudson, so far in control of Drake Xavier. Xavier, you see the top of his chest. It is blood red almost. Did you know this referee will disqualify you if you lick somebody? Yeah, I, I've heard about it. He you told me he would DQ me if I licked anybody again. He should have disqualified you five times before for biting people. Un un he didn't go over the rules before the match. Uh, maybe, he did, maybe he mentioned biting or not, I'm not sure. Hudson still in control of Xavier, who's just right now raw meat in that corner. Here comes the Alpha Daddy. Oh, oh. smart move by Xavier. And now it's Drake Xander coming in full force. One of the most impressive moves you'll see here on Proving Ground. Goes for the cover, but doesn't Not enough. Not enough. That move by Drake busted my lip open two weeks ago. That I did see. That was that was an impressive match you two had. Hudson tries to pick him up. Xavier, oh, drops him down. Is he going to go for another cover? No, he wants to put the punishment on Jonathan Hudson. Sometimes that's the name of the game of pro wrestling. You have to dish out that punishment. Isn't that correct, Buzzsaw? Yeah, Drake probably picked that up for me. You know you gotta beat him up, you gotta punch him, you gotta bite him, claw him, scratch him. 
So you were saying when you were a tag team, you were, you was the one giving Drake Xavier all the all the leadership and all the advice. I mean, he should have listened more. I thought it was the other way around, to be honest with you. Xavier right now in control of Jonathan Hudson. Able to overcome that early match flurry. I thought he was going kick, to kick him again. And he kind of goes for a cover. Does not hook the leg, but does get the chin lock in on him. Crazy night tonight here at Proving Ground Wrestling fans. And right now we got a great main event. We have all different types of matches that happen tonight. And Drake Xavier in there with Jonathan Hudson. A win for Drake Xavier would be humongous for his career. Yeah, if, so if he beats Hudson, that means I can beat Hudson. I don't think necessarily it goes that way. Oh, this is something I've been enjoying from Drake Xavier's offense. That self suplex. Oh, he gets Hudson up and a nice flip. And now he's basking in the crowd, which normally I'd say that's a waste of time. Yeah, in this situation. But he is pumping himself up, Drake Xavier. And Jonathan Hudson feeling the effects of that suplex. He used that thing. See, he wasted too much time. Able to get back up. Now he chops Hudson. And now Xavier back in control for the moment. Xavier using that suplex three times on route to winning the Young Lions Cup last week. Another chop by Drake Xavier. Drake is definitely a lot stronger than he looks. Oh, he absolutely is. Tries to whip Hudson, but Hudson's going to win that battle. Xavier goes chest first in the turnbuckles. Oh, Blue Thunder! That's Blue Thunder! Spinning Blue Thunder! He turned into a tornado right there, and Hudson almost gets the three counts. But if we're in Florida, wouldn't it be a hurricane? Uh, I'll talk to you about that after the match, but so about tornadoes and hurricane weather. Right now, both men in this main event down and hurting. A great match here between Drake Xavier and Jonathan Hudson, the Alpha Daddy. Hudson now picking up Xavier. He's going to fling him halfway across the building. And he could. He could do it. Standing switch. Hudson goes in a turnbuckle. Forearm shot by Xavier. Now what's he thinking? Turns him around. German suplex. Well put by Drake Xavier. I tell you, you can feel the confidence coming out of him right now. He's wasting time. <laughs> He's wasting his. I can't. Get, I can't believe you're giving this guy advice and leadership. The, the tag team, you're. He's always he's the one giving you leadership and advice. He didn't always take it either, you know. Xavier, right now outside the ring, springboards. Oh, the greatest wrestling move ever, right here, and that will be the end of the match. Oh, unbelievable. Suplex by Hudson. Death by Suplex. Both guys down right now. The referee's gonna have to administer a count. And the referee, he knows he does not want this match. The fans don't want this match to end on a double count out. So he's using very good caution in this to see if these guys can move. Is this referee able to count to 10 is the question. I've seen it done. He's, he's able and capable to count to 10. Does he have to use his toes? No, he does not have to use his toes. Just check. Six, up to six. Hudson struggling to get to his knees. Xavier trying to get to the ropes. And it's Hudson who does get back up to his feet. Oh no, he's got Xavier exactly where he wants him. Oh, almost takes his head off. And again. I'd like to take Drake's head off. That I, that I know. I think you've done it, almost done it a couple of times. Now Hudson's get Set him up. Big Liger bomb, and he, oh, I thought he got the three. That was like 2.99999. Oh my God. Unbelievable, Jonathan Hudson is just bringing everything out of his arsenal tonight, and he's not able to get down Drake Xavier. Maybe it was Hudson who was taking Xavier a little lightly earlier in this match, but I'll tell you, he's not taking him lightly now. Reversal by Xavier. Goes for a knee to the stomach, knee to the face. Oh, but Xavier gets caught up. Oh, reverses into another power bomb. Goes for the cover, and again Xavier able to kick out. This is a good fight, and I love a good fight. That I agree with you, Buzzsaw, 100%. This has been an absolute classic main event here on Proving Ground. Xavier right now in tremendous amounts of pain. Hudson right now, is he's he looks almost confused. He's like, 
What do I gotta do to take care of this guy? Hudson has been through so many wars so far this year on Proving Ground. And right now he's setting up Xavier again, going into the corner. But Xavier, Xavier able to spot him. Nice European uppercut. Xavier quickly goes to reverse him. Oh, big boot into the corner. That's the kick that broke us up. Oh, that was, and again! Splashes him in the corner. Xavier goes for the cover. Oh, we almost had an upset. Oh, almost had an upset. He didn't hook the leg. Two and a half on Hudson. Back and forth, this match is gone. And now Xavier telling us to stay there. He's gonna try to go high risk again. Drake Xavier, this is what brings him to the, brings him in the wins in the party. But, oh, misses the splash. Now Hudson going for the ground. Yes, he goes for the submission. He's got him stuck in there from Drake Xavier. That was the Drake should fight him. Drake should fight him. No, he has to tap out Jonathan Here is your winner, Jonathan Hudson. Jonathan Hudson saw the opportunity when Drake Xavier missed that splash, and he was able to put in the submission for the victory. A classic match nonetheless, Buzzsaw. Yes, one for the ages here at WWE and Proving Ground. I'd like a match with either one of these guys. Oh, now we have uh, we have the microphone over to the Alpha Daddy. Let's see what the Alpha Daddy has to say. He's, he needs a second there to catch his breath. What a match this was. I think that is is Hudson actually shaking. Oh. I hate it when he greets up fans like that. fans an incredible show of respect by Jonathan Hudson to Drake Xavier ending tonight's classic proving ground main event and a wild night of proving ground wrestling Did he try, I think he just tried to steal my outro well nonetheless wrestling fans I'm big slow hand for everybody here that joined me you have a good night and see you next week right here on WWN Proving Ground.